Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Iron Man Free, the third installment of the Iron Man series. It stars Robert Downey Jr., Gwyneth Paltrow, Don Cheeto, John Farrow, Guy Pierce, Rebecca Hall, William Sadler, Michael Ferrer, and Ben Kingsley. And it's co-written and directed by Shane Black who directed the film Kiss Kiss Bang Bang with Robert Downey Jr. He also went on to write all the Lethal Weapon movies. The movie begins after working with the Avengers from an attack in New York. He returns to Malibu, California in his mansion suffering from insomnia working on several new Iron Man suits while hardly spending time with his girlfriend and assistant, Pepper Potts, played by Gwyneth Paltrow. He then had suffered from anxiety attacks from the last battle that he's been having before. But in a flashback of New Year's Eve 1999, Tony Stark was with a science partner, Maya Hansen, who's played by Rebecca Hall, trying to avoid Aldrich Killian, played by Guy Pierce, who's been crippled, trying to back Tony up from his company AIM, known as Advanced Idea Mechanics. But somewhere in the present day, a terrorist known as the Mandarin, played by Bing Kingsley, has planned an attack by using many of his bombings to go after the entire country, including the agencies and the president. Unfortunately, one of the attacks affected Tony's faithful bodyguard named Happy Hogan, played by John Farrow, who as soon had fallen into a coma in the hospital. So then Tony decided, while live on television, to pose a threat towards the Mandarin from harming his friend, which then leads to a helicopter attack in his mansion trying to warn Maya, who just came while Pepper is around. While both of them were safe, Tony soon survives from the attack and was launched all the way. He was given a flight plan to Tennessee, where he meets a 10-year-old kid named Harley, teams up to find out the investigation of the Mandarin. But with the help of Colonel James Rhodes, played by Don Cheeto, who already has the Iron Man Patriot suit, tries to go after the Mandarin along with Killian, who's already after Pepper, with his uh, fire-breathing crew to save the President, the agencies, and Pepper. What I had to say is that out of the first two Iron Man films, I thought this one was better than I expected. It's a lot darker than the first two films were, but it does have more of the energy and has more of a story background what's really starting to follow what's really happening in Tony's life. I also like the villain, uh, the Mandarin, played by Ben Kingsley. I mean, this is an Oscar-winning actor who went on to do many movies in his career, although he has been doing plenty of bad ones as the years follow, such as Blood Wayne and the Love Guru, but he, of course he's been best known for his work such as Gandhi and Sexy Beast. And I also loved him in all the other films he was in such as Weapons of Mass Distraction, an HBO movie, and, and The Assignment, which I thought he was good in that one too. Not to mention Species, so yeah. But he was very good in this movie, you know, very comedic in that sort of way. You know, he sounds, you know, basically <laughs> just playing the role very straight. You know, not over the top. Just exactly just right what, what it looked like. Had a long beard. Just kind of works. Um, Killian, however, was played by Guy Pierce, was also good in the film. But I felt like, you know... They were focusing more on him more than the Mandarin himself. However, there were plenty of flaws in this movie that I just feel like 
that it may have been gone way too long. I thought that the kid Harley was was a little annoying at first, and he really was. But then I kind of got used to it after a while. I didn't like the whole, you know, relationship that's been going through between Pepper and Maya. That seems to be a bit ridiculous as it turned out. I, you know, it was just going straight forward like, like any other movie I've seen. Because, you know, we know that Tony does love Pepper even more. But the action and the special effects were amazing. Definitely what you expect from an Iron Man movie. And it's good to see John Faroe returning his role as his bodyguard, even though he hasn't been seen much in the film. Also, Don Cheeto playing uh, James Rhodes, who actually was in, in the second movie as a replacement to Terrence Howard in the first film. You know, he did a very good job in the third sequel, more than he did in the second movie. You know, it's good to see that he was working together with, with Tony in this movie. He has a great cast, too. William Sadler as the president, Michael Ferrer as the vice president. You know, two veteran actors went on to do all these other films in the past. I had to say Shane Black did a very good job directing this movie, as well as co-written this film. It does sort of has the the actual feel of what you know his direction was. It does have the kind of dialogue you never thought you would hear from, from a writer who did all the Lethal Weapon movies. It's just clear, crisp dialogue. That totally works for this film. And it's good to see that Shane Black finally did a good job working with Robert Downey Jr. Like he did with Kiss Kiss Bane Bane. Yeah. It's just amazing. He took over for John Farrell's direction. So even though he's the producer for the film too. He did a very good job. I really enjoyed this movie. Although it's not better than The Avengers. That's what I would say. Because I still think The Avengers was and still the best of all the superhero movies out there. But it certainly is, is a lot better than the second movie as it turned out. But even though the second movie does have a lot of good moments. But it's not better than the first movie though. But I do enjoy it nevertheless. So anyway, I give Iron Man free three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.